Okay, so Achilles tendon rupture is uh, are very difficult to uh, diagnose and treat, and they're often missed, unfortunately. They often affect uh, young people and also dads that are often returning to sport after a long layoff after having kids or time off with work. Uh, they also affect our professional athletes, and often the big question is, do I need an operation for my Achilles tendon rupture? So hopefully we're going to um, go through that today, and thank you for listening to the Foot and Ankle Orthopedic Surgeon. As always, uh, subscribe or like our videos. Um, so the big question, do I need an operation? We're going to go through today the re-rupture rate, tendon strength, and what your return to function might be, and potential return to work. So we're going to start it with uh, what is the Achilles tendon? Well, the tendon at the back of your leg, um, it's in red there, it touches into the heel bone which is called the calcaneus which is that C there um, and it takes about 12 and a half times your body weight so it's actually the strongest tendon in the body and it's incredibly important to your function. Now in terms of how it's injured, um, it's often injured in what's called a uh, plantar flexion injury. You're often uh, pushing off to go for a run or something like that and you feel a catch or someone like someone kicked you in the back of the leg. The other way to do it is to violently wrench back your ankle. So where the ankle is wrenched back towards the position of the knee and that puts the Achilles under a lot of tension um, and can result in a, in a rupture. But the most likely way to do it is that what we call plantar flexion, so foot down and pushing off and it's often very benign and people often can't believe they've done it. Now an example of this is Connor Watson who played for the Newcastle Knights last year. Um, he went to take off from dummy half and he collapsed and then he looked behind like someone had got him in the back of the leg. Um, and that's a very, very, very common mechanism and it's usually our weekend warriors that are doing it. Um, now, everyone, just about everyone that comes in with this type of injury, they say, oh look, it felt like someone kicked me in the back of the leg. The other words they say, look, oh, I felt like someone shot me in the back of the leg. And then I couldn't quite walk as well. I wasn't too bad, but my foot was swollen. And that's what Connor did. Connor looked back and um, was asking, you know, can we Bulldogs play? Well, look, what happened to me? Um, often there'll be what's called a palpable gap, meaning that you can feel a gap in the, in the tendon, or the tendon just won't feel the same as the other side. If you were to press around there, it often feels a bit boggy compared to the side that's not been injured. Um, but unfortunately, up to 25% of them are missed, and in the future, very shortly, we're going to provide a video on looking other ways to make sure that your Achilles tendon uh, rupture cannot be missed or reduce the chance of that um, for some simple things uh, in terms of looking at the tendon. Um, now, how is it treated? Well, everyone's a bit individual, but the critical point is the first 48 to 72 hours. You should either be put into a plaster with your foot pointing downwards as much as possible, um, or into a boot with lots of wedges so your foot's pointing down, but your foot must stay in that position. If you come out of it, then the tendons are no longer opposed, and that's a problem. Now, these pictures, the, the picture on the left is the Achilles in yellow. The picture on the right is an MRI, and the arrows are pointing to two ruptured ends of the Achilles tendon, and then the white area in the middle is blood. Now that's what can happen if you don't get into that position with your foot pointing down and either a plaster or a boot in the first 48 hours. And that can mean that the tendon can, let, can heal in a lengthened position or potentially not heal. So that does change what happens. If I get a patient that presents much later than the 48, 72 hours, I may encourage them to have an operation rather than not. So that's incredibly important. Now, the big question, do I need an operation anyway? Well, there's no right answer or wrong answer to this, and some surgeons will, will approach this differently. Um, it does depend on your individual circumstances, but there are factors that will influence the decision in each case. Now, the first one to talk about is the risk of rupturing the tendon again. Okay? Now, we used to think maybe 10, 15 years ago that your risk of rupturing the tendon again if you had an operation um, was around 3 to 5%. Whereas if you have what's called non-operative treatment, um, the risk is about 12%. And hence, we'd often convince patients to go and have an operation because we thought that the risk was significantly different. More studies have been done on Achilles tendon ruptures. And now what we actually think is it's 2.3% risk of re-rupture if you have an operation versus 3.9% if you don't. And in that regards, I would think that's a fairly negligible difference. And hence, I wouldn't be pushing a patient uh, to have an operation based on risk of re-rupture. Um, in regards to um, risk of uh, rupturing again, hence, then there is little difference, realistically, right? 1.6%, which is, which is pretty small, okay? So, um, to go from there, the very next um, uh, point of discussion we're going to look at is function, returning to function. And there are studies on this looking at return to function at 12 months, and there is little difference between uh, patients that had an operation versus patients that didn't. Um, and hence, I would then hence couldn't uh, recommend an operation to my patients uh, based on function at 12 months, based on the medical literature. Um, in terms of return to work, so there are studies that say slightly different things, but there are some that show a month earlier return to work if you have um, the tendon surgically repaired. Um, and I've got to say my protocol, patients do get out of a boot and often um, they're about a month ahead if they have an operation as if they don't.
So that is a difference to some people. But there is a complication rate with surgery and it's up to a 5-7% to risk of wound issues with surgery in the medical literature. And if, it, if you have a problem with the wound in terms of an infection or a wound breakdown, it can be an absolute disaster. Um, so that is a very important consideration to take into account. In regards to strength, so there is a study that's been shown that, um, that people that have attended surgical repair may have a 14% increase in strength. That probably matters to athletes or people that play a lot of sport. That may lead them to an operation, but for your average person like you and me, the function is the same at 12 months. So hence, I wouldn't recommend operation for everyone based on that. Now, what will you be able to do? Well, some studies have shown that two thirds of patients will return to a high pre-injury activity level within five years. Whereas if you have a low sporting activity level, the vast majority of patients will return to their previous level at five years. And those studies were done in patients that didn't have an operation. But in the NFL, so American football, um, only 60% of patients return to play and they're effective for a season. And most of those have um, surgical fixation. So that just shows you that it's quite a serious injury. And even if you're a professional athlete, it's possible you won't make it back. So, um, Look, thank you for listening to my video. If you have any questions, please send us an email or visit our site or our YouTube um, site. And uh, thank you for listening to us again today. Bye.